Hello, welcome to today's video where I'll be covering my webcomic process in Clip Studio Paint. In the last video, we started the process of creating a character reference sheet by setting up our canvas for sketching. Today, we'll continue working on our sheets and discuss some handy features for tackling the drawing and coloring process. Links to additional tutorials, as well as everything mentioned in today's video, will be down in the description below. With our models placed on the canvas where we want them, now we can go ahead and draw over them on a new layer. I recommend making a new layer for each angle. For easy visibility when sketching, you can change the color of your model layer by clicking the Change Layer Color option in the Layers panel, or you can simply lower the opacity until it's easy to see both the sketch and the model underneath. If your character has a very symmetrical design, you could cut your work time in half by using the Symmetrical Ruler under the Create Ruler Subtool group and dragging it along the middle line of your 3D model. Now everything you draw on one side will be mirrored to the other side. You can disable the ruler at any time to add in asymmetrical details by right-clicking on your ruler and selecting Show Ruler. An easy way to keep consistency between angles is to make a copy of your front-facing sketch once it's complete, lower the layer's opacity, then place it on top of your other angles before drawing out your next sketch. This will give you landmarks to reference for where things not shown on the 3D model itself are, so you can be sure your sketches will all look cohesive in the end. When your sketches are complete, it's time for line art. To keep this neat and adjustable, I recommend using a vector layer, found here on the Layers panel. With a vector layer, you can use the Object tool to adjust the line art size and positioning. If you don't like the position of a line you've drawn, simply click it while the Object tool is selected to drag it into a better shape. Once your line art is done, you can move on to colors. Since this is a reference, you'll want to stick to basic flat colors that your character design uses and not apply any filters or lighting effects. If you've put art of your character in the subview panel like I mentioned earlier, you can easily color pick directly from it and apply that to your canvas. For added convenience later on, you may find it helpful to create a set of color swatches for your character too. Click the drop down on the Color Set panel and go to Edit Color Sets, then select Create New Set. Now you can add in any colors from your canvas by picking them with the eyedropper, then going to Add Color. For even more convenience, you can set your color set to List View under the drop down, which will allow you to name each swatch. This is great for sets with multiple characters or designs that feature many colors. With that done, your character reference sheet is complete. I personally like to keep these loaded into my subview panel while working on my comics, as that way I can quickly check their designs to make sure each comic page is consistent. This is only the standard layout for a reference sheet, so feel free to add in any other details, character info, or personal decorations onto the sheet to make it work the best for you and your project. Those are the basics for how I create a character reference sheet in Clip Studio Paint. Check the description below for my social media links and more tutorials. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.